Hey folks, so we're going to look real quick at uh, uploading your course documentation into a class. Uh, so you're doing an initial class, you've come to the end of the class, you have your paperwork to upload. So first we're going to go into training, and I'm actually going to build a course real quick, just to remind you how to build a course. So when you're building an initial course, Training, Manage Courses, hit the Add New Course button. So when you are approved by Colleen for your course, this is how you'll go in, you'll build it out. Um, so your course will be an initial class. So if you're doing an initial EMR or initial EMT, uh, you'll, or whatever level, you'll choose that. So we'll start with an EMT. So it's your initial course. Course type is initial. It's been approved. Uh, your location. Um, Johnny here only has two locations that he can uh, teach at, so we'll just put him in for children's right now. His, uh, he's the trainer. Any co-instructors you may have, so in this case myself, and then our medical director, So, um, and then our course information. Initial EMT course where it's at, coordinator is Johnny Test, and then we'll go for our starting and end dates. So we'll say we started, we're going to start at the beginning of November, so November 1st, 2015. Our end date, we're going to go, we're going to finish up by April 30th, 2016. And as soon as uh, we know our test date, we'll put that in. Well, in this case, we'll say that we know our test date, and it's on the 30th. Uh, if you don't know your test date, you can leave that one blank at this point in time. And then later down the road, um, when we get that established, um, we can get that updated. You can edit it at any time. So either you can put it in, uh, myself or Colleen. Um, so just uh, we just need to make sure that we get that in there between those of us involved. If you're going to use this as your uh, way for people to sign up as well, um, we'll cover that later on. But at this point, we're, uh, we're not going to head that route just yet. The internal note down here can only be seen, remember, by the instructors um, and the administrators. The description up here in the top section of the class is uh, visible to everybody, including the students. Save and continue. We we'll hit that button, we'll pop it over. We have our topical hours. Um, you can leave this one blank. You know, as we know, the EMT courses are going to cover a, a bunch, so we'll get it. Uh, that'll be covered just in your syllabus. And just by it being an initial course, we'll know what topics there are that are being covered. Documents, if at this point when you're building the class, if you have things like your syllabus ready, um, your course layout, anything along that line, you can upload them now or we can come back and do it later. If you upload it now, select your document, uh, we'll go with course layout, If the, you know whatever your title is. Um, you know, a description, and then under your document type, for your course, you're going to be using these different course uh, types or document types related to a course. So um, your course syllabus, course roster, course information. If you find that there's others that you need, um, one that I will be adding will be clinical documents. And others, you know, like I said, as we go forward, um, find your file. So look on your computer, figure out where it is, save it. As you see, it uploads it, puts it in place. Next thing to do is save and continue. Takes you over to your tests. I see when you're initially building this, if you know when your t unit tests are going to be or your module tests, you can stick all those in there. You know, unit one test, test date, 
Uh, we'll say that's going to be right before Thanksgiving. So your choices for grading methods, either simple direct grading, so that would be your score, you know, 90 out of 100, 26 out of 30, whatever it might be, or pass-fail. So those are your two options. Um, if you're going to do a simple direct, direct grading method, you'll put in how many points it's worth and your type of test. So again, options that are available there. You have, and again, if there's some of these, this is one of those things that we can uh, modify and adapt. Let me know what you need. We'll, uh, we'll put stuff in there for you. Save it. You can continue to add tests. Um, we'll do this one right before Christmas. It's another 100-point test, and it's another unit test. Uh, unit and module, pretty much uh, synonymous. Again, just depends on how depends on how you have your uh, course broke down. And again, if you know these, you can put them in ahead of time. Otherwise, again, you can come back in at any point in time and upload courses and upload information. So we get to this page. It's going to ask us to add our training. This is one of the keys. Remember to hit your Add Training button. This puts it in the system and says, hey, you know, adds it in there, gives it a training number, so and assigns it. Once you add a training, it pops you back out to your screen. Yours will be a lot shorter because I unfortunately or fortunately can see everybody's stuff in the state. You'll only be able to see the stuff that um, you're tied into. So we'll come over here to our course. Uh, we're coming back in, you know, either same day or at a later time. Click on our course to get into it. Our attendees. So early in your course, remember, make sure we get those students to get into OWLS, build an account, um, complete their student application. And once they get that done, you can come in and start loading them into the course. Come in, click on your student. Uh, remember, it searches first name or anywhere in their name. So first name, last name, middle, and also in their email address. So in this case, Colleen and I are taking, and Donnie Test are taking a uh, initial course. Everybody you check, you can go in, hit each person. And as you add these people, it starts building your list. One of the keys here is make sure you hit your Add Selected Providers when you're done adding your people, um, and then it builds your list. Uh, the, one of the reasons we do this early on in the course is we now have the ability through our attendee status to track all of our students. Um, license numbers are no longer generated when we build the person, but they're generated when they are uh, issued a license. So, you know, we can put as many people in there as we want and make it work it through the process. Then. It's your attendee status. You know, if they complete the course, pass everything, they'll get a pass. You know, if they complete the course and aren't successful, if they withdrew from the course or dropped, um, you know, the different statuses are, that are there. Um, some other statuses that you can see um, that are available as well. So at the end of the course, you'll put in your statuses, add all those in. Save it. Documents, as you can see, we already have our course layout in there. We can continue to upload documents. So you'll have your, your course roster. So your course roster would be your document type. Um, come in, choose it. Again, save it, upload it. You'll do this with you know, all the stuff that you're required to submit. So course roster, attendance sheet. Uh, if you don't build your tests into the system, your grade sheet that has your tests, 
the big key and the one thing we are going to require is under tests is your final course grade for your students. So that way we know if they hit that, you know, 80 percent, so we know if they're eligible for the state uh, written and practical testing. Um, but then any other documentation, your clinical documentation. Um, if you have gotten a copy of everybody's CPR cards, you can upload all their CPR cards. You know, any anything that you find that's important that you may need or you want to have retained, you can upload. Um, the the number one key is anything that is required by Colleen needs to be uploaded, but you can upload any other information as well. Um, you know, as a coordinator, you should be keeping documentation. This is one way that you we can maintain that documentation for you and you don't have to keep a big filing cabinet in the back of your house or you know at work to make it all work. So through this process and now in the future as we work through and you go into your classes and you complete them, you'll put it in, you'll document everything, you'll upload it, um, and then once you have added everything on the details page, You'll come in, you'll hit edit, you'll change your status from improved or approved or in progress, which you could have had it set at, to completed. Um, once it's completed and you save it, uh, we'll have it set up that it uh, sends Colleen an automatic email, you know, and it says that in this case Johnny Test has completed his initial EMT course, all of the doc required documentation has been uploaded, Please review the course and you know get with the coordinator to make sure that everybody's ready to move forward. So, you know the the thing that we're working for here is we're going to, wanting to try to save everybody required paperwork. Um, you know, save you mailing fees, save you having to get stuff back and forth, save the chance of it getting lost in the mail, um, and things along that line. Recommendation is keep copies or keep a hold of all your originals until we have, uh, you know, from the office. So Colleen has gotten with you and said, hey, everything is here, everything is good. Um, just in case, you know, for some reason something didn't upload right or didn't wasn't able to be viewed right, um, that we have that ability to go back and fix it. So that's pretty much what we had to show you with this part. Um, I know that it's going to be a little bit of a learning curve, so if you have questions, have thoughts, please feel free to get with me, and I can help walk you through it. We can make it all work. One of the keys, um, as we were building a class, you notice the start date was the beginning of the class, the end date was the end of the class. So there should only be one class built for each initial course. So even if you meet 50 times, there's still one course built in the system. Um, otherwise, if we build each individual class in as an initial course, it's going to give every night a separate course number, and you're going to have a lot of extra stuff all tied together through this process. So if you have people that attend a course as, excuse me, for CE, and they need to document their CE, there's either two ways you can do that. Build a course, another course, do it as a continuing education course, and just list those people that are attending for CE hours. Or the other part is have a roster, have a sign-in sheet that they can get a copy of, and when they do their individual training upload, that they can put it on their individual training upload and have documentation to make sure that uh, it works you know make sure they have documentation in case they ever get audited so if you have questions like I said get with me we'll make it all work um, we'll work through the process you know there'll be a lot of communication this uh, round of classes as we move forward because you know it's, it'll be new for all of us but uh, let us know what you need let us know how we can help you and uh, yeah, we'll do our best to make it successful so again if you have any questions get with us all right thanks